Welcome to the WRTA Parrot Transit tutorial. The WRTA's Parrot Transit is for people who cannot use the regular WRTA bus for some or all of their trips. It is a shared ride service, which means you'll be riding with other passengers and making multiple stops. And it operates on the same days of the week and hours of the day in the same areas as the regular WRTA fixed route bus. The ADA Parrot Transit Service Program is not a personal taxi service. You should expect to be traveling with other riders or going in the same general direction as yourself and it is not available everywhere and at all times. Now that you understand what the WRTA ADA Paratransit Program is and isn't, let's look into how you can become eligible. Category 1 eligibility includes, among others, persons with mental or visual impairments who as a result cannot navigate the system. This eligibility category includes people who cannot board, ride, or disembark from an accessible vehicle without the assistance of another individual. Category 2 eligibility is not applicable to the WRTA service because all vehicles are accessible. Category 3 eligibility concerns individuals who have a specific impairment-related condition which prevents them from getting to or from a stop or station. It is important your disability prevents you from boarding and disembarking the bus specifically. If an impairment-related condition only makes the job of accessing transit more difficult than it might otherwise be, be, then eligibility will not be granted. If you are denied eligibility, there is an appeal process you can follow. Since ADA paratransit eligibility is established as a civil right, methods are in place to ensure that the due process is observed. Federal regulations state that the administrative appeal process is intended to give applicants who have been denied eligibility or have been deemed conditionally eligible the opportunity to have their case heard by a panel independent of the transit authority or initial decision maker. The right to appeal is as follows. Applicants have 60 days from the date of eligibility determination letter to appeal the decision in writing to the WRTA. Prior to the hearing, the applicant's eligibility status remains unchanged from the original WRTA determination. Appeals will be heard by a panel independent from the WRTA. Applicants will have the right to speak in person on their own behalf and or have others represent them at appeal proceedings. Applicants will have the right to necessary support, such as an interpreter, if requested in the appeal letter. The determination resulting from the appeal will be made in writing within 30 days and will state the reasons for the decision. If a decision is not made within 30 days of the date of appeal, full eligibility will be given until a decision is made. Applicants may reapply for service at any time if there is a change in their functional mobility. If you are deemed eligible, the next step in the process is to access paratransit service. We will now show you an example process for scheduling a ride. Let's say that you want to travel from the WRTA hub to the WRTA operations center at 8.30 a.m. First, you or your caretaker must call 508-752-9283 or 508-453-3423 if you're calling between 5.15 a.m. and 8 a.m. Wait for the call taker to pick up and tell the call taker that you want to schedule an ADA trip. Then tell them the exact address of where you want to be picked up and the exact address of where you want to go. In this case, the origin address will be 60 Foster Street, Worcester and the destination address will be 287 Grove Street, Worcester. Then tell them your name and ID number given to you earlier by the WRTA once you are deemed eligible. And when this is all finished, you must also schedule your return trip in the exact same manner. Once you make the call, it would be beneficial to review a couple of rules regarding WRTA paratransit surface. The night before your trip, the WRTA will call you to give a 20-minute pickup window for the trip for the next day. Riders must be ready during the entire 20-minute pickup window. The driver will arrive any time during the pickup window and will only wait five minutes once the vehicle arrives before leaving for the next pickup. An individual is considered a no-show if he or she is not available for pickup as described above. A letter will be sent to the rider after each no-show informing them of the no-show. If a rider accumulates three no-shows within a three-month period from the first no-show, the rider will not be permitted to use the service for a period of up to 30 calendar days. A copy of the no-show appeal process is attached to each letter. If you do not receive a phone call the night before your trip is scheduled, you must call to receive your pickup information or to cancel your trip. At times, riders may experience a late pickup or drop-off due to inclement weather, traffic, construction, or other unforeseen circumstances. If this occurs, please contact PBSI at 508-752-9283 to report it as soon as you are able. This will provide PBSI the opportunity to make sure that riders are receiving a quality, reliable service. We will spend a few minutes discussing a PCA. A PCA is a personal care assistant. Personal care assistants are individuals whose assistance is needed by a rider to travel. 
Anyone who is involved in the helping process required by the rider to travel, either while riding on the service or after reaching a destination, is considered a PCA. The ability to have a PCA accompany a rider is determined during the ADA eligibility process, eligibility reviewer. Some riders may require a PCA on all trips or may only require one on some trips. This is also determined by the eligibility reviewer and may be modified by submitting information in writing to the eligibility manager. You are always allowed to take one traveling companion. Companions pay the same fare as the person they are accompanying. Companions different from PCAs are not deemed eligible by ADA standards to accompany a rider and therefore are required to pay standard WRTA fare rates. PCAs and companions must have the same pickup address and drop off address as the ADA rider. Service animals are ADA fares are as follows for each one way trip two twenty five in town, two fifty for one town away, two seventy five for two towns away, and three dollars for three more towns away. The WRTA sells discounted paratransit ticket books at ten percent the face value, which can only be used for WRTA ADA complimentary paratransit service. Ticket book costs are as follows twenty tickets for four fifty, each ticket has a face value of twenty five cents each and 80 tickets for $18, which also has a face value of $0.25 cents each. An example of this is a one-way in-town trip would use 9 tickets. So the 9 tickets at $0.25 cents each would equal two twenty-five, which is the total amount for one in-town trip. Thank you for watching the WRTA Paratransit Tutorial. For more information, you can visit therta.com backslash paratransit.